investigating, the uh, Department of Justice is investigating our district, and we also have um, national TV, right? We have a school board member who is a star now on national TV, and I'm not proud of the image that he gave our district. Uh, so, you know, this school, our current school board president said yesterday that we're in crisis, and I agree, we are absolutely in a crisis. And I think it'd be a crisis if we voted those three people back in to stay governing our schools. And so why on earth would I run for the school board? Right? With all of that, just like what I just described, why on earth would I step up to do this? And a lot of people ask me, and I need to let you know I've thought long and hard about this. Because it is a very personal decision. It's a big risk professionally and personally to take this to become a candidate for the school board. But I've taught in public schools for 20 years. I have my K-5 tattoo. Um, I've just spent three years at the university preparing new teachers to teach in our schools. And I have not given up on public education. I've lived in a nation who has given up on public education. Right? And what happens when we give up on public education? Everybody collects every dime and penny and nickel that they have to send their child to the public sector, the private sector, to get educated. And the lowest of the lowest economic level, public education is for them. And there's not even accountability for that because they don't even, the governments there don't even check that their kids are actually attending those public schools. You guys, those are third world countries, right? And if we don't protect public education, we're not protecting our middle class. And our economic livelihood, our middle class, all of that depends on our public schools. And I won't and I haven't given up on those. And so before I pass the microphone over um, to, to Ralph, who's also running for the school board, I want to share my vision for TUSD and the values that I bring. Because honestly, on that ballot, November 6th, that's when this election will take place, there's no primary. There's going to be right now, the last I checked, there were 10 candidates. And so, at the, and that's who's filed. We'll see if they all turn in their petitions. But at the very top of the ballot, our President Barack Obama will be on the top, on the front. And on the very bottom, on the back, we'll have this group of about 10 people Right? And we know what happened last time, in 2010, when, our, when we didn't pay attention to who we should vote for, for our school district. We got the man that just represented us on The Daily Show. Okay? So it's our responsibility to really know, and again, I thank you for being here to learn about this race and to inform yourself about um, our candidacies. So my vision is that this district is made up of so many communities. What students need at Choya High School is very different from what students need at Rincon High School. And that's very different from what students need at Savino High School. There's different perspectives, different priorities in all of those different communities. But what all of those communities deserve is a successful school. And I believe, and I strongly know it can happen, is that your neighborhood school should be the very best choice for you and your family. And we can make that happen. And in every one of those schools, although the priorities will be different in those different communities, and some of the perspectives within this diverse community that we live in, what every school deserves is the innovation and the tools and the skills for the 21st century, right? What I'm using for tools in my personal life and in my, in my career right now, our kids need those same schools in their classrooms if they're going to be prepared to enter this workforce. They also need to have the ability to express themselves, to creatively express themselves, and to think deeply about their world and to critically think about the world that they live in. We can't prepare them to make change in their world, to participate in the world, if they can't critically think about that world. So that resonates and that should exist in every one of those schools. 
And I know it can. We can make that happen. And the last thing is I want to leave you with my values. And I have these here, so I will definitely pass these out. Please come and take these. I have the vision, my vision that I just talked about, and the values. I value that diverse community in which we live. And I value communicating with all of those different voices. Just about a month ago, our board actually voted on limiting that communication. They actually had conversations on maybe we shouldn't talk to the people that, we, that voted us into these seats that we represent. We wanted to limit that communication. That is not my value. When we live in such a diverse district, we have to be open to living all of those, or listening to all those different perspectives and opinions and needs and desires. Another value I have is data. As a teacher in an IEP conference, in a parent-teacher conference, in my own meeting with my principal to evaluate my instructional abilities, I have to be accountable to the data. And this past year we had a board that didn't listen to that data. There was a successful program that they ended that had both outside data and their own in-house data that said it was a, su a successful program. We don't have that luxury, right? And they ended a successful program, and honestly, I don't think we had an issue with that program until politicians from Phoenix needed that program for their own political campaigns, right? We've heard about this manufactured crisis. That's a buzzword out there now. That was the manufactured crisis that was brought to our community so that Hoopenthal and Horn could win their elections. They made their campaigns on the backs of our kids. And by giving up that right to decide on what we do with our students in our schools, this board gave up their responsibility and their rights to make those decisions here in Tucson. So I value our local governance. I value the diverse opinions in our district. I value the data that we use to make those, de those decisions. We have these decisions every two years. Think about what's happened to our district in the last two years. Think about how we've really gone down, how far we've fallen. We're in the national spotlight for nothing that any of us want to be in the national spotlight for. We cannot afford to keep the same leadership on that board. And I hope I have your vote on November 6th. Again, my name is Crystal Ann Foster. And I'm ready for two U.S. school board.